Hello YouTube, this is Asatsu5 and I got another knife review for you today. Uh, this is over the Case Swayback Jack. Um, this is a fairly new knife in the traditional knife scene. Uh, it first made its appearance in 2008. And um, it's a Tony Bowes uh, uh, Case collaboration. Tony Bowes is a custom traditional knife maker. He revives a lot of old knife designs that are not um, necessarily commonplace. Um, he, he's responsible for the rebirth of the sow belly and the saddle horn. And this is, um, I guess, his interpretation of a loom fixel knife or a, um, a half hawk. Now, um, the Swayback Jack takes his inspiration from, um, um, let's see, the um, model 17 or pattern 17 and um, that was first produced prior to the 1940s um, known as a half hawk or half a hawk bill or a, a loom fixel knife uh, many of these knives were to, um, pattern after 19th century jack knives um, many of which had a sheep's foot blade and if you've never seen a um, um, half hawk bill or um, a loom fixel knife, I'm about to show you a picture of one. Um, right here, this is a half hawk uh, bill or a um, um, loom fixel knife. And you can see that the master blade is a sheep's foot. And... Um, this is a very traditional knife design. I know that GEC happens to make the uh, loom fixel knife and they call it the Weevil Jack. Um, and um, I can't remember how much it costs, but if you want the original design that inspired this knife, GEC makes it. In fact, GEC just came out with their version of this knife as well. Anyways, um, like I said, this is a fairly new um, knife design made its debut in a SHOT Show 2008 and uh, this particular knife is the um, uh, Case Swayback Jack Chestnut Bone uh, Chrome Vanadium Steel um, yeah, but what makes it different is that it has a Wollcliffe blade which I really prefer for um, this type of knife. It comes with a um, Wollcliffe master blade and a pin secondary blade. Um, something really cool about this knife um, is that in Case paid extra attention to some of his fit and finish uh, features. Now you can see that the centering on the master blade is a little bit lackluster, but look at this, watch this. The um, back springs are flush when closed. They are flush when at half stop position, and they'll flush in the fully open position. I have not seen a other knife that does this, or at least this is the first one I've ever handled that did that. And um, it kind of makes me wonder, if Case can do that with this knife, then why not do it with all the knives? Check this out. This is a uh, Case Trapple with True Sharp Steel. It has no half stop, but if it did have a half stop, the spring's poking out a lot. And um, when it's fully opened, you can't see it, but you can feel it, that it's not flush. Um, so, um, my question is, if Case can do that with this knife, then why not um, the other knives? I really enjoyed using this knife. That's one small detail that I really appreciated. Uh, this is a barrel head slip joint, meaning that it only has one bow store. It doesn't have a cap. Um, if I would say the pull and um, um, the pull weight, I'd have to say, is probably a 6 or a 7. I'd say more of a 6, maybe, yeah, I'd say a 6 on uh, the Master Blade. 
And then on the pin blade, uh, five and a half, six. Um, this particular knife, the closed length is three and one fifth inches closed. The weight on this knife is 2.2 ounces. Um, I have to say, the edge out of the box is a little bit subpar. Um, I brought it to razor sharpness um, pretty easily. It wasn't. It took a little bit of time, but it was very easy to get to um, a razor sharpness. And I've used this knife for cleaning my fingernails, um, uh, mostly opening up mail and boxes, and um, it's held its edge pretty well. Keep in mind I haven't used this as a steak knife like I did this knife so I didn't rub it on a ceramic plate but um, it, it still has a razor edge and I've used this knife. Um, not hardcore used because it's not a um, um, hardcore knife you know it's more of a gentleman's photo but I, I did use this knife quite a bit and it's still holding its edge pretty well. The um, uh, pin blade was a little bit more difficult to get razor sharp, but I must say uh, one of the cool advantages of getting a jackknife is that you have two blades. You keep one razor sharp and you never use it. Then you get your master blade and you sharpen it up razor sharp and you use it and you use it. And then if you're ever caught off guard, in between sharpening se sessions and you need a blade and your master blade is dull you can actually use your pin blade or your secondary blade to get that one cutting job done so you have a backup blade it's like having two knives what well, is like having two knives in one uh, package this knife cost uh, $59.95 on knifewalks.com and um, Let's talk about the walk and talk. We're going to listen. It has a very faint snap. Um, I, I'd say it has a decently strong back spring. I don't see you ever closing this on your hand, but if you do, it has a half stop. Don't worry about it. But let's see what it sounds like when it closes. Pretty decent. The pin blade had a little bit more snap when opening. Still authoritative snap when closing. So I would say the um, walk and talk is pretty good. You have a good back spring. Um, and um, it's um, going to be functional. So the spring is uh, sufficiently strong, but even so, if you are hard using this knife, which I really don't see you doing, unless you're just really caught off guard, um, it does have the half stop as a safety mechanism. Um, the, um, I don't know if you can see this, but the, um, uh, Tang stamp says TB um, 62117CV. And um, let me reread that again um, TB 62117CV. Okay, yeah, I was right. And um, the TB stands for um, uh, Tony Bowes. I don't know the rest of the numbers. But CV stands for chromium vanadium steel. And um, this is really a big step forward from a case. I've, um, I have a small case collection. I, um, I got two trapples from them, and my brother got a trapple from them, and the edges were horrible. You know, they were toothy in not a good way they like literally had nicks in them and um, like I said the um, half stop was not flush in the or, or the back spring was not flush in the half stop position or uh, the open position 
which these knives are pretty affordable. This one's a little bit higher end, but I'm going to say if Case can do it with this knife, why not step up the um, fit and finish with the rest of their knives? So, um, uh, yeah, this is my nicest Case knife. I'm very happy with it. I find it very en enjoyable to use. I love the Wollncliffe blade, which is probably one of the most useful slip joint blade patterns you can get. Um, it has no belly, but you can really do some precise cutting, like if you're cutting out catalogs for, um, out of the newspaper. Um, if you um, need to cut off a barcode from a box, like in my job, and opening up and breaking down boxes is very easy with a Wollcliffe blade. Now I'll say this, and this is mostly true with all slip joint knives, my personal opinion. Slip joint knives are not the most ergonomic in my opinion as far as um, filling my hand. Um, I'm not saying they're uncomfortable, but to me, I like big tactical knives. And to me, anytime I use a slip joint, it's like shaking hands with a cat. I'm a little bit more comfortable with a full-size trapple, but um, even this uh, isn't, you know, my norm. I don't always carry a slip joint. Um, when I do, it's because I don't want to scare people when I'm doing small cutting jobs. So usually when I'm um, carrying knives, I carry a separate self-defense knife. And depending what I have going on that day, if I'm um, just um, going to walk or something, I'm not expecting heavy use, I'll bring a small um, EDC blade, maybe a slip joint, maybe a um, Indora, something that's a little bit less intimidating. And that's what I like about um, uh, slip joints is that they're not intimidating looking. Um, they might not be my favorite knife style, but there's a lot to be said for a tool. This is purely a tool. This is not a weapon. Uh, in my opinion, um, slip joint knives should be allowed in public schools. That's just me. And because they're not weapons, they're, they're tools and they're works of art. And um, I've really, really enjoyed using this, even though it's not my preferred type of knife. I really appreciate what this knife has to offer. Now, some things to be mentioned. Um, this, the, pin, the shield is not pinned in, it's glued in, so possibly with extended years of use, that, ca uh, that case um, uh, shield can pop out. Um, but yeah, I'm going to say it. This is a very nice knife, and they make several variants of it. Um, this is the only one in chrome vanadium steel, which I highly recommend the chrome vanadium steel over the True Sharp. But um, the True Sharp is easy to sharpen; it just doesn't hold its edge for that long. They have a few limited edition versions of this knife with um, um, green sea dye on the covers, and um, they got the Mediterranean Blue, they got the uh, Crimson Bone, Cayenne Bone, and Genuine Stag. Um, so you can buy this in many different flavors. Um, and that's about it. That's all I have to say. Just go over a few talking points. Um, this knife is relatively new in the traditional knife scene. It was expired by the... Um, um, uh, half hawk bill or um, a loom fixer knife and that knife was modeled after a 18th century or 19th century English jack knife and um, the price let me get the price out on this is $59.95 on knifeworks.com so I hope y'all enjoyed this review um, I am in the process of um, finding my grail slip joint and hopefully I'll have that review for you um, in some in a few months now but um, as of right now this is my favorite slip joint knife I'm a Satsu 5 and I'm out